My belly behind his Out of here. My belly down there. Out of my sight. Out of my heart. God help me. Betty, child, dear child, will you wait? Will you open up your eyes, Betty, little one? Uncle, Susanna Walcott's here from Dr. Griggs. Doctor, let her come. Come in, Susanna. What does the doctor say? Dr. Griggs, he bid me come tell you, Reverend Sir. He cannot discover no medicine for it in his books. Then let him search off. Aye, sir. He was searching his books since he left me, sir. But he bid me tell you my little the unnatural things for the cause of it. There will be no unnatural cause as I have said for Reverend Caleb's effort. He will surely confirm that. Let him search his medicine. But at all thought of the natural causes, there will be none. Aye, sir. He bid me tell you. Speak nothing of it in the village, Susan. Go directly home and speak nothing of a natural cause. Aye, sir. I pray for her. <laughs> Uncle, the rumor of witchcraft is all about. I think you best go down and deny it yourself. The parlor's packed with people, sir. I'll sit with you. And what shall I tell them? That I discovered my daughter and my niece dancing like he's in in the forest? Uncle, we did dance. Let you tell them I confessed it. But they're speaking of witchcraft. Betty's not witched. Abigail. I go to the congregation, for I know you have not opened me. Now what did you do in that forest? We did dance, Uncle. And when you leapt out of the brush so suddenly, Betty was frightened and she fainted, and there's the whole of it. Child, sit me down. I would never hurt Betty. I love her dearly. Now look, you child, I have no desire to punch you. That will come in its own time. But if you have trapped with spirits in that forest, I must know it, for my enemies will, and they will ruin me with it. But we never conjured spirits. 
then why can she not wake herself sensibly at night? This child is desperate and must come out. My enemies will bring it out. I have many enemies, do you know that? No, it There is a faction that has sworn to drive me from my pulpit. Do you understand? I think so, sir. Now then, in the midst of such disruption in my own household, it is discovered to be the very center of some obscene practice. Abominations are done in the forest. It were only sport, Uncle. I saw Tuchiko waving his hands over the fire. Why were he doing that? And screeching and speaking gibberish. He always sings his songs and we dance. I cannot blink what I saw, Andrea. My enemies will not blink it. And I thought I saw a dress lying in the grass. A dress? I, and I thought I saw someone naked running through the tree. No one was naked. You mistake oh, yourself. I saw it. Now my ministry is at stake. My ministry. Perhaps your presence like Whatever abominations you have done, give me all of it now. For I dare not be taken unaware before I go down there. There's nothing more. I swear to God. I have fought you for three long years to bend these stiff necked people to me. And just now, in a good respect for me and this parish, you compromise my every character. I have given you a home child that put close upon your back. Now give me upright answer. Your name in the town, entirely white, is it not? Why? I'm sure it is, sir. There be no blush about my name. Abigail, is there any other reason for good and proper discharge of you? It has troubled me now that you have been seven months out of their household, and no other family has called for your service. They want slaves, not such as I. Let them send to Barbados for that I will not black my face for I any I do not have any. Goody Putnam, good to see you. It's a lot. Shall I struck a hell upon me? No, it is. How hot, she flop? How hot? No, no, she never flew. Why, well, sure that you did. Miss Collins said it's hot over in the Stone's barn. They come down that as a bird, he said. Now look, you, Goody Putnam, she never. Mr. Putnam, good morning. It is a providence the thing is out now. It's a providence. What's out, sir? Why, where are your clothes? Look, you, Anne. That's strange. Ours is open. Your little Ruth is sick. <coughs> I do not call it sick. The devil's touch is heavier than sickness. It's death. Death driving into a fork and hook. Well, pray not. How does your child ail? He ails she <coughs>
don't you understand it, sir? There is a murder which among us bound you keep yourself in the dark. Let your enemies make of it what they will. You cannot blink it no more. So, if you were conjuring spirits in that board last night. Not I, sir, not I. Teach you but in truth. Now I am undone. You are not undone. Let you take hold here. Wait for no one to charge you. Declare it yourself. You have discovered witchcraft. In my house, Thomas, in my house, if my enemies find this out, they will talk of you with it, and they will make it. I only want to see how that is. Why aren't you alone with the room? For Grandma, Tom, she's improved a little, I think. She gave a powerful sneeze before. It's a sight of fun. I fear no more, Rachel. The room brand sneeze. Another like it will shake her wits together, I'm sure. Will you leave me now, Thomas? I would like to pray a while. Uncle, you've prayed since midnight. Why don't you go down? No, I will wait for Mr. Hale to arrive. Mr. Harris, let you strike out against the devil, and the village will bless you for it. But please, come down, speak with them, pray with them. They're thirsting for your word. Surely you'll pray with them. I have no stomach for disputation this morning. But I will leave them in song. Let you speak nothing of witchcraft to the cause of the other one. I've had enough contention since I came, and I want no more.
men also have afflicted children? Uh, no. These are fathers. John Proctor. You don't believe in witches. I spoke nothing on witches one way or the other. Are you Tom Giles? No, no, John. I have a few queer questions of my own that I have asked. I hear you be a sensible man, Mr. Hale. I pray you leave some of them to Salem. My daughter, sir. We discovered her in the window on the high road, flailing her arms as though she would fly. Tries to fly? She cannot bear to hear the Lord's name. That's surely a sign of witchcraft afoot. No, no. We cannot look to superstition. The devil is precise, and his marks are as definitive as stone, and we must look only for his proper sign, and judge nothing before him. And I shall not proceed unless you are all prepared to believe me, and that you can find no trace of hell. It is, it is agreed, it is agreed. We will abide by your judgment. Good then. Now, what was your first warning of the strangeness? I saw my daughter and my niece Abigail and ten or twelve of the other girls dancing in the forest. You permit dancing? No, no, it was secret. Mr. Paris's slave has a knowledge of pondering, sir. You cannot be sure of that, Cody Ann. I know it, sir! For I set my room to learn from the man who murdered her sisters. Why did he choose my house to strike? What victory did the devil have in the sword and attack? If it's the best the devil wants, who is better than the best? That is deep, Mr. Paris. Deep. Does someone afflict you, child? It need not be a man or a woman, mind you. Perhaps a bird, it's a little other, cries to you. Perhaps a pig. Anything at all. Does some figure bitch in the fly? What sort of dance can you do with 
Wouldn't I always say I saw a kettle in the grass when they were dancing? Uh, that were only soup. Soup? What sort of soup were in that kettle? Why, uh, beans and lentils, I think. Mr. Harris, did you notice any living thing in that kettle? A mouse? Perhaps a spider? A frog? That frog jumped in there. We never put it in. A frog, Abby? We never put it in. Abigail, it may be your cousin is dying. Did you call the devil last night? I didn't call him. Tichuba called him. Tichuba? I think I should like to speak with this Tichuba. Goody Ann, will you bring him up? How did he call him? I know not. He spoke Barbados. Did you feel any strangeness when he called him? A sudden cold wind, perhaps? A trembling below the ground? I didn't see no devil. Betty, wake up, Betty, Betty! Can I obey me, Abigail? Did your cousin drink any of the brew in that kettle? She never drank it. Did you drink it? No, sir. Did Tichuba ask you to drink it? He tried, but I refused. Why are you concealing? Have you sold yourself to Lucifer? I never sold myself. I'm a good girl. I have wiped you for a lot to me. 
and I look. Scut, scut. Sarah Cut, I sir, and Goody Osborne. I knew it! Goody Osborne were made back to me three times, and each time my baby withered in her arms. I thank you, Run to Hire, for telling us to fight off. Take courage. You must give us all their names. How can you bear to see these children suffering? Look at their faces, Tichuba. Look at their God given innocence. Their souls are so tender. Tichuba, the devil is out there preying on them like the beast upon the flesh of pure land. God will protect you for your help. I want to open myself. I want the light of God. I want the sweet love of Jesus. I dance for the devil. Give me 14 in jail. 
Why, Mr. Hale, good evening to you, sir. Come in, come in. I hope I do not startle you. Oh, no, it is only we heard no horse. Your good wife, Proctor. I, Mr. Bed. I hope you're not out to bed yet. No, no. We did not use the visitors out the dark, but you are welcome here. Will you sit down, Mr. Hale? I would. But you sit, good wife, Proctor. Will you drink cider, sir? No, I heard bells on the stuff. I have some further traffic again tonight. Let you sit, sir. I will not keep you for long, but I have some business to discuss with you. Business of the court? No, no, no. I come on my own, without the court's court. I know, I know not if you are aware, but your wife's name is someone mentioned in the court. We know, sir. Our very warden for us. We are tired of late. I am a stranger here, as you know, and in my ignorance, I find it hard to throw out fear for even those who come. As for this afternoon and now tonight, I come from house to house. I come now to Rebecca Nurse's house. Rebecca's charged? God forbid such a woman be charged. He is, however, in the you, you cannot believe, I hope, that Rebecca has trafficked with the devil. It is impossible. Surely you cannot think so. This is a strange time, Mr. No man can no longer doubt that the powers of the dark were gathered in a monstrous attack upon this village. There's too much evidence to deny it now. Won't you agree, sir? I have no knowledge of that line. But it's hard to think so pious a woman to be seen to be a devil's bitch after 70 years of such good prayer. I, but the devil is a wily one. She cannot deny it. <coughs> she is, however, far from confused, and I know she will not be. I thought it too quick to question the Christian character of this house, if you will. Why, we have no fear of questions, sir. Good then. Now, in the book of record that Mr. Harris keeps, I note that you're rarely in church on Saturday. No, sir, you are mistaken. 26 times in 17 months, sir, I must call that rare. Can you tell me why you are so absent? Mr. Hale, I never knew I was to come to that man for I come to church to stay at home. My wife was sick this morning. So I am told, but you, sir, why could you not come alone? I surely did come when I could, and when I could not, I prayed in this house. Your house is not a church. Surely your theology tells me that. It does, sir, it does. And it tells me that a minister may pray to God without he have golden candlesticks upon the altar. What golden candlesticks? Since we built the church, there were pewter candlesticks upon the altar. Francis Nurse made them, you know. The sweeter hand never touched the metal. But the Paris came, and for 20 weeks, he did not the golden candlesticks to the have I gave it her from dawn of day to the of night. And I tell you truly, sir, when I look up to heaven and see my money letter in his elbows, it heard my prayer, sir, it heard my prayer. I think sometimes the man dreams of cathedrals, not the platform meeting houses. And yet, sir, a Christian must be in church on Sabbath day. Tell me, do you have three children? I, boys. How can it be that only two are baptized? I like it not when the parish lays hands upon my baby. I see no light of God in that man. I will not conceal it. I must say it's true, Proctor. That is not for you to decide. The man's ordained. Therefore, the light of God is it. What's your suspicion, Mr. Hale? Uh, no, no. I have I to... nailed the roof upon the church. I hung the door. Oh, did you? That's a good sign, then. Maybe I have been too quick to break the man's voice. But you cannot make me ever decide the destruction of religion. I think that is in your mind. Is it not? There's a softness to your record, sir. A softness. I think we have been a bit too hard with Mr. Harris. I think so. But sure, we never loved Satan here. Do you know your commandments, Elizabeth? I surely do. There be no one to blame upon my life, Mr. Hale. I'm a covenant Christian woman. And you, sir? I am sure I do, sir. But you repeat that, if you will. Your commandments? I am. Love shall not kill. John. I. You see, sir, between the two of us, we do 
Well then, I bid you good night. Mr. Hale, surely you are suspecting me somewhat, are you not? I do not judge you, Vicky Crawford. I have what I think to God who is in the court. I am giving both good fortune and good health. Good night, sir. John, I, I think you must tell him. What's that? Will you tell him? I have no proof for it except my word be taken, but I know the children's affliction had not to do with witchcraft. Not to do with witchcraft? Mr. Paris discovered them sporting in the woods. They were startled and took sick. Who told you this? Abigail Williams. Abigail? She told me that you came, sir. Abigail Williams told you it had not to do with witchcraft? I thought she did. Why? Why did you keep this? I never knew until tonight that the world had gone down with it with nonsense. Nonsense? Mister, I myself have examined Tichuba, Saragun, and numerous others who have confessed to dealings with the devil. They have confessed it. Why not? If they must hang for denying it. There are them that will swear to anything before they'll hang. Have you never thought of that? I have. I have. Indeed. <laughs> and you, sir, did you testify this in court? I am not reckoned with going to court. But if I must, I will. Ah, the fault are there. I told her nothing, but I wonder if my story will be credited to the court. I do wonder. When a minister is steady-minded as yourself, the suspicion such a woman has never lied, she cannot lie, and the world knows she cannot. I may fault her somewhat, minister. I am no fool. Mr. Proctor, what should be open to me now? For I have heard a thing that troubles me. I have heard that you may hold no belief that there may even be witches in this world. Is that true, sir? Uh, I know not what I have said. I may have said it. I have wondered if there be witches in the world. So you do not believe that? I have no knowledge of it. But the Bible speaks of witches, and I will not deny them. And you, woman? I, I, I cannot. You cannot? Elizabeth, you were wrong. I cannot believe the devil may own a woman's soul if she keeps an upright way, as I have. I'm a good woman, and I know it. I should only do good things and yet am still secretly bound to Satan. Now I tell you, sir, I cannot believe it. But, but woman, you do believe that there are witches? You think I am one. I say there are none. You, you surely don't buy against the gospel. She believed in the gospel, every word. Listen, I don't know about the gospel, not myself. She did not mean to doubt the gospel. You cannot believe it. This would be a Christian house, sir. A Christian house. I see. God keep you bold. Let the third child be quickly baptized and go without fail each Sunday to Sabbath prayer. Keep the salt quiet waiting on us. John! Giles? What's the matter? They take my wife and Rebecca Nurse. Rebecca's in the jail? It's John, she would come and take her in this wagon. We've only now come from the jail, and they'll not even let us in to see them. The town is showing me gone wild now, Mr. Hale. Reverend Hale, can you not speak to the deputy governor? I'm sure he mistakes these people. Frank, calm yourself, Mr. Nurse. My wife the very brick and mortar of the church, Mr. Hale. And not to court, there cannot be a woman closing it to God and Martha. How's Rebecca charged, Mr. Nurse? For murder, she's been charged. For the marvelous and supernatural murder of Goody Putnam's babies. What am I to do, Mr. Hale? Man, if Rebecca be tainted, then there's nothing stopping the whole green world from burning. But she rests upon the wisdom of the court. They will send her home. I know it. You cannot be truly tried to How is such a woman murder children? Man, remember, an hour before the devil fell, God thought him beautiful in the heavens. All I said for my wife were really bugs. Mr. Corey, what complaint were made on your wife exactly? That one of the world cut charged her. Said she would she with her books. Good evening to you, John Parker. Why, Mr. Cheever. Good evening. Good evening, all. Good evening, Mr. Mayor. I hope you come not on business of the court. I do, Parker. I, I am for the court now, you know. It's a pity, Ezekiel, that an honest tailor who might have gone to heaven must burn in hell. The burn is this, you know it. You know yourself, I must do as I am told. You surely know that, child. And I, as the you not be sending me to hell, I like not the sound of it, I tell you. I like not the sound of it. Now believe me, Parker, how heavy be the law, and all the tonnage I do carry on my back tonight. I have a warrant for your wife. What say you? A warrant for my wife? You said she were not tall! I knew nothing of it. When was she charged? I think it was 16 warnings tonight, and she is one. Who charged her? Why, Abigail Williams charged her. A 
Caleb Williams. On what crew? What crew? Mr. Proctor, I'm given little time. The court bid me to search a house, but I like not to search a house. So, will you hand me any profits to wipe my key here? Profits? I never kept profits, not since I were a girl. I just buy a profit here, Proctor. Ah, oh, why, this is Mary's. Would you please give it to me? Uh, have the court discovered the text of profits now? Do you keep any others in this house? No, but not this one either. What signifies a profit? Why, a profit, profit may signify. Now, will you please come with me? She will not. Let's marry her, Mr. No, no, I am forbidden to leave from my sight. You will leave her out of sight and out of mind, Mr. Fetch her here. Well, I'll pay you with it. 
Oh, it will take God himself to cleanse this town properly. Abby, you mean to cry out still others? If I live, <coughs> if I am not murdered, I surely will, until the last hypocrite is dead. That there is no one good? I, there is one. You are good. Am I? How am I good? Thomas Putnam's reach of the land. 
remove that man, Michael. I bring evidence. Why won't you feel my evidence? Let me go. Let me go. Charles, Charles. Am I way, will it? I bring evidence. Now go in there, Charles. It's a court. <coughs> Come a moment. Mr. Hale, go in there and demand I speak. A moment, sir. A moment. They behave my wife. How do you dare come wrong into this court? Are you called daft, Corey? You are not a Boston judge yet, Kathorn. You may not call me daft. Who is this man? Giles Corey, sir. I have asked Corey. the question. I am old enough to answer it. My name is Corey, sir. Giles Corey. I have 600 acres in timber in addition. It is my wife you be contending now. And how do you imagine the developer cause for such contemptuous right? Now be gone. Your old age alone keeps you out of jail for this. They're telling lies about my wife. Lies! So then you took it upon yourself to decide what this court shall believe and what it shall set aside? Your Excellency, we need no disrespect. Disrespect indeed, mister. This is disruption. This is the highest court of the supreme government of the province. Do you know it? All I said when my wife was reading books, and I take her out of my house. What door. books? What? It is my third wife, sir. I have never had a wife who would be so taken by books. Understand. I looked for a reason, but I couldn't. I have broken charity with the woman. I have broken charity. Excellency, he claims hard evidence for his wife's defense. Did let him submit his evidence to Papa Hey, you are certainly aware of the procedures here, Mr. Hay. Good to remove. Oh, we are desperate, sir. We come here three days now and cannot be heard. Who is this man? Francis Nurse, Your Excellency. His wife's Rebecca that would condemn this morning. Indeed, my makes the finding such uproar. I have only good report of your character, Mr. Nurse. I think they must both be arrested in the attempt. I'll let you write your plea in due time to I will. Excellency, we have proof for your eyes. God forbid you shut them to it. The girls, sir, the girls are frauds. What? What? We have proof of it. They are all deceiving you. This is contempt, sir, contempt. Peace, dear Trayvon. Do you know who I am, Mr. Nurse? I surely do, sir. And I think you must be a wise judge to be what you are. And do you know that your 400 are in jails from Marblehead to Lynn and upon my signature? I... Uh, Except that you are condemned name by that signature? Excellency, I never got to say it's such a weighty judge, but you are deceived. And if you should only open your eyes to the heavens for one moment, you can see that the girl would sit before you in court on you. Mary Ward, <coughs> what are you about? She would speak with the deputy governor. <coughs> Did you not tell me Mary Ward was sick in bed? She worked, Your Honor. When I go to fetch her to court last week, she said she was sick. She's been striving with her soul all week, Your Honor. She come now to tell you the truth. Who is this? John Proctor, sir. Elizabeth Proctor is my wife. Beware this man, Your Excellency. This man is mischief. I think we must hear the child, sir. Peace! What would you tell us, Mary Ward? She never saw no spirits, sir. Never saw no spirits? Never! She signed a deposition, Your Honor. No, no. I accept no deposition. Tell me, Mr. Proctor, have you given up the story in the villa? We have not. They've come to overthrow this court, Your Honor. I pray you, Mr. Perry. Do you know, Mr. Proctor, that the entire contention of the states in these trials is that the voice of heaven is speaking through the children? I know that, sir. And you, Mary Ward. How can you the proud people are sending their spirit out against you? Not a pretense, sir. I do not hear you. It's a pretense, she says. Ah! The other girls, Suzanne Walcott, and the others, they are also pretending? Aye, uh, sir. Indeed, now, Mr. Proctor, before I decide whether or not I shall hear you, it is my duty to tell you this. We burn a hot fire here. It melts down all forms of concealment. Are you certain it's in your conscience, visitor? That your evidence is the truth? It is. And you'll surely know it. I take it you came here to declare this revelation in the open court before the public? I thought I would. I, with your permission. Now, sir, what is your purpose in so doing? I have free my wife, sir. There lurks nowhere in your heart, nor hidden in your spirit, any desires to undermine this court? Why, no, sir. I'll tell you straight, mister. I've seen marvels in this court. I see people choked before my eyes my spirits. I see them stuck by pins and slashed by daggers. And I have not, until now, the slightest moment, 
to suspect that the children may be deceiving me. Do you understand my meaning? Excellency, does it not strike upon you that so many of these women have lived for so long with such upright Do you read the gospel, Mr. Proctor? I read the gospel. Then you should surely know that Cain were an upright man, but yet he did kill Abel. Aye, God tells us that. But who tells us that Rebecca the nurse murdered seven babies by setting a spirit out upon them? It is the children only. And this one will swear she lied to you. Judge Hayfall. Aye, she's Mr. Proctor, this morning your wife sent me a claim in which she states she is pregnant now. My wife pregnant? There'll be no sign of it. We examined her body. Your Honor, if she says she's pregnant, she must be. This woman will never lie, Mr. Danforth. She will not? Never, sir, never! If I should tell you, Mr. Proctor, I will have to be kept another month. And if she begins to show natural signs, she'll have her living another year. What say you to that? Come now. You say your only purpose is to save your wife. Good then. She's saved for yet another year. And a year is long. It is done. Will you drop this card? Uh, I... I think I cannot. Then your purpose is somewhat larger? Just come to overthrow this court, Your Honor. Your Honor, these are my friends. They're wise. I tell you not, not, sir. Sit you down. I'm ready to hear your evidence. I'm not only Marshal, go into court and then get stopped with the dead Let them the clear recess for one hour. Let them go to the tavern if they will. All witnesses and prisoners are being kept in the building. You'll forgive me, sir. I've known him all my life. He's a good man. Sure of it, Marshal. Now, Mr. Proctor, what kind of business do you have for us? And I beg you, be clear, as open as the sky and honest. I am no lawyer, so. The pure heart needs no lawyer. Proceed as you will. W will you read this first, sir? It's a sort of testament. The people signing it declared their good opinion of Rebecca and Martha Corey and my wife. Their good opinion. These are all covenanted Christians, land-holding farmers, members of the church. If you'll notice, sir, we've all known the women many years and never saw no sign they had dealings with the devil. How many names are there? Ninety-two, I'm here, Excellency. These people should be summoned for questioning. Excellency, I gave them all my word, no harm would come to them like this. This is a clear attack upon the court. Is every defense an attack upon the court? Can no one defend? All innocent and Christian are happy for the courts in Salem. And these people are gloomy for it. And you should like to know from each and every one of them what discontents them with you. I think they ought to be attacked. It's not necessarily attacked. Yes. These are all covenanted Christians, sir. Then I am sure that they have nothing to fear. Mr. Sheba, have a rest warrant drawn for these and are arrested for examination. that this 
man borrowed. There he is. Mr. Putnam, I have here an accusation from Mr. Coy in which he states you fully prompted your daughter to crime tree upon George Jacob, which is now in jail. A lie! Mr. Putnam, say your charge is a lie. What say you to that? A fart on Thomas Putnam. That's what I say to that. What proof do you submit for your evidence, sir? My evidence is there. If Jacob hangs for a witch, he forfeits his land, and there's no one but Putnam with the coin to buy such a great piece. He's killing his neighbors for their land. But proof, sir, proof. The proof is there of an honest man who heard Putnam say on the day his daughter cried witchery on Jacob's. He had said she had given him a fair bit of land. And the name of this man? What name? The man that had given you this information. I cannot believe. And why is that? You know why not. He'll lay in jail for this. This is contempt of the court, Mr. Danforth. You will surely give us the name. I can give you no name. I mentioned my wife's name once before, and I'll burn in hell long enough for that. I stand mute. In that case, have no choice but put you under arrest for contempt of this court, sir. Do you understand that? This is a hearing. You cannot clap me for contempt of a hearing. Oh, it's a proper lawyer now. Do you wish for me to declare this court in full success, or will he give me good reply? I cannot. I cannot give you. You are a foolish old man, Mr. Cheever. Start the record. The book is now in full succession. I ask you, Mr. Gordon. Your Honor, he has the story in confidence, sir. He will not betray his confidence. The devil lives on such confidence. And without confidence, there can be no conspiracy, Your Excellency. I think it must be broken. Old man, if your foreman tells the truth, let him in like a decent man. But if he assists remaining anonymous, I must know why. Now, sir, the government and the central church demand you the name of him who reported Mr. Thomas Putnam a common murderer. Excellency. Mr. Hale. We cannot blink it no more. There is a prodigious fear of this court in the country, sir. Then there is a prodigious guilt in the country. Are you afraid to question me? I may only fear the Lord, but there is still fear in the country nevertheless. Report me not to the fear of the country. There is fear in the country because there is a moving pot to couple price in the country. But it does not mean that all that are accused are a part of it. No uncorrupted man may fear this court, Mr. Hale. None. Mr. Corey, you are under arrest for contempt of this court. Sit you down and take counsel with yourself before you are sat in jail until you decide to answer all questionings. No, 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 no. Oh, I tried to throw up one up. I'll kill you yet. Peace and giants. You lost up. You will. Say no more, John. He's only playing you. He plans to hang us all! This is the court of law, mister. I have no effrontery here. Forgive him, sir, for his old age. Peace, Giles. Give it all that. Help! <laughs> Remember the angel Raphael who saved the boy. There is your rock, Paul Tuber. Very well, deposition, Your Honor. Now, I would ask you to remember, sir, while you read it, that until two weeks ago, she was no different than the other girls are today. You saw her scream. She howled, she swore familiar spirits choked her, and she even testified that Satan, in the form of the women now in jail, tried to win her soul away. And then, when she refused... We know all this. Aye, sir. She swears now that she never saw Satan, nor any spirit, vague or clear, that Satan may have sent to hurt her. And she declares her friends are lying now. Excellency, I do believe this goes to the heart of the matter, sir. It surely does. I cannot say he's an honest man. I know him little, but in all justice, a claim so weighty cannot be argued by a farmer. In God's name, stop here. Send him home. Let him come again with the lawyer. Now look at you, Mr. Hellgate. I have signed. Send me to death warrant. I am a minister of the Lord, and I dare not take a life without there be proof so immaculate. No sweat of qualm of conscience may doubt it. You do not doubt my justice? I have this morning signed away the soul of Rebecca Hurst. I'll tell you the truth, sir. I'll not conceal it. My, my hand shakes at the end of the blue. I pray you, sir, let lawyers present this argument to you. <laughs> Mr. Hale, believe me, poor man of such terrible learning. You are most the wound. I hope you forgive me. I'm 13 years at the bar, sir. I should be confounded when I call upon to defend these people. Let you consider it now. And I bid all of you to do likewise. In an ordinary crime, one calls upon witnesses to prove his innocence. But witchcraft is ipso facto, by its face, by its nature, an invisible crime. 
Therefore, who may be witness to it? Only the witch, the victim, no other. Now, we do not hope the witch accuse herself, granted. Therefore, we must upon, call upon her victims, and they do testify. The children certainly do testify. As for the witch, it's not been denied that we are most eager for the confession. Therefore, what more can the lawyer bring out? I believe I've made my point. Have well, I not? The, the child says the girls are not truthful, and if they That's are... That's precisely what I'm about to consider, sir. What more may you ask of me, unless you have my property? I surely do not, sir. But you consider. But let you put your heart to rest. The deposition is proper. I should like to question you. Mr. Paris, I bid you be silent and sit you down. You may sit. <laughs> Mr. Cheever, will you go to the court and bring the children here? Has Mr. Crocker been before this deposition? No, sir. Has he ever heard you? No, sir. Has he heard you? No, sir. So then you are telling me you had an exact in my court. Lying, knowing that people would pay for your evidence? Answer me! I did, sir. How are you instructed in your life? Don't you know that goddamn soul lies? Or is it now that you lie? No, sir. I am with God now. You're with God now? I, sir. I will tell you this, child. You're either lying to me now, or you're lying in the open court. In either case, you have committed perjury. You cannot let me say lies, man. Do you understand that? I cannot lie no more. I am with God. Abigail leads the girls to the forest, Your Honor. 
and they have danced there naked. What is this dancing? Excellency, when I first arrived from Beverly, Mr. Paris told me that. Do you deny it, Mr. Paris? I do not. But I did not see any of them naked. But you have danced. I, sir. You say you never saw it. Well, she might. Oh, 
I thought of her softly. God help me, I lusted. There was a promise in such sweat. But it is a whore's vengeance, and you must see it. I put myself the entire thing in your hands. I know you must see it now. My wife is innocent, except she know a whore when she see one. You deny every scrap and tittle of this? If I must answer that, sir, I will leave and I will not return. She does not deny, Mr. Danforth. She does not deny. You'll remain where you are. Sit you down. Mr. Paris, will you go into the court and bring goody wife Proctor here? Mr. Paris, and do not tell her one word of what's been spoken here and let you knock before you enter. The bottom of this swamp. Your wife, did you say, is an honest woman? In her life, sir, she had never lied. And when she put this girl out of your house, she know her Fay Harlot? Aye, sir. And knew Fay Harlot? She knew her for a harlot. Good then. Now, child, she speaks of harlotry. May God spread his mercy on you! Oh! Turn your back. Turn your back. You likewise. Now let neither of you face Goody Proctor. No one in this room is to speak a word or hint a gesture of A or nay. Enter! Mr. Chief, report this testimony in all exactness. Are you ready? I cannot stop my mouth, it is God's 
it seems you were afflicted not too long ago. Now it seems you afflict others. Where did you find this power? I have no power. I have no power. Mary, Mary, God damns all lies. Mary Warren, how came to you to this turnabout? Have you seen the devil? I, I. God damns liars, Mary. I cannot hear you. What do you say? You'll confess yourself, or you'll hang. Do you know who I am? I said, you'll be open with me, or you'll hang. Now, Mary, remember the angel Raphael when he says you boy. Her wings! Her wings are spreading! Oh, please don't, Mary, please don't! She's going to go down! Mr. Barrett. 
Paris command me, sir. I cannot deny it. Are you drunk, Marshal? No, sir. It's a bitter night, and I have no fire here. Fetch, Mr. Paris. Aye, sir. There's a prodigious stench in this place. Well, I have only now put the people for you. Beware of hard drinks, Marshal. Aye, sir. Don't you question your tale, Excellency. I shouldn't be surprised. They have preached to them over lately. We come not to speak of anger. Mr. Paris is crazy. That's strange. I think sometimes Paris is a madman these days. Mad? I see them, I see them yesterday coming out of this house, and I better be born again. He wept and ran his way. I think it's not good. The fellow sees him so instead. Perhaps he has some sorrow. I think it'd be the cows, sir. The cows? There'll be so many cows wanting the high roads. Now their masses are in the jails, and there's much disagreement on who they will want now. Mr. Paris be arguing with the farmers all yesterday. There was great intent for the cows, sir. For contention make him weep, sir. It were always the man that we could contention. Good morning, sir. I thank you all for coming. I beg your pardon, wait for me so early. Good morning, Judge Hayes. Reverend Hale has no right to enter this place. Excellency, a moment. What's your business here? Mr. Hale has returned to bring Rebecca <coughs> to God. He did, sir, confession. Hear me? Rebecca has not given me a word this three months. But she sits with him and her sister, Martha Corey, and two or three others. He pleads with them to confess their crimes and save their lives. Why, this is indeed a providence, and they saw They saw them. Not yet, not yet. But I thought it'd be wise to summon you to think on whether it'd be wise to. There is news, sir, that the court, the court must reckon with. My niece Abigail, I believe, is vanished. Vanished? I thought to advise you of this earlier, but. Why, how long were they gone for? This be the third night. Mercy Lewis is gone too. I'll have a party sent for them. Where may they be? Excellency, I think they'd be aboard a ship. My daughter has brought it up to me that she heard them last night speaking of ships, and tonight. I discovered my strong box was broken into. She has robbed you? 31 pounds, sir. I am penniless. Mr. Paris, you are a brainless man. It profit nothing that you should blame me, for I cannot think that they would run off, except for the fact that they feared to keep in Salem, ever since the news of Andover is broken here. Andover is remedy. The court goes back there on Friday. I myself will continue examinations there. It is rumored. That there be rebellion in Andover. There is no rebellion in Andover. I tell you what is said here, sir. Andover has thrown out the court and say they want no part in witchcraft. Why, in every execution I've seen, not but high satisfaction in the town. Judge Hagelon, it were a different kind of hang till now. Rebecca is no bishop that lived three years without she married bishop. John Proctor is no Isaac Ward that drank his family into ruin. Let Rebecca stand upon her gibbet and give righteous prayer. I wish she'd seek a vengeance on you. She's condemned the witch. The court have. Pray you! So what do you propose then? I would postpone these hangings for a time. There'll be no postponement. Reverend Hale has returned. There is hope. And if he can bring even one of them to God, that confession will surely damn others in the public eye. And none may doubt that they are all linked to hell. Achiever hand me the list. It cannot be forgotten that when I summoned the congregation for John Proctor's excommunication, hardly 30 people showed. And this shows discontent, I think. There'll be no postponement. Excellency. Now, sir, which one of these listed here must be brought to God? I myself will strive with them until dawn. There is yet time till dawn. I'll do my utmost. Now we'll be at most hope for it. Excellency. A, a, a dagger. What do you say? Last night, when I opened my door, a dagger clattered to the floor. You cannot hang this sword. There is danger for me, and I dare not go outside, for I fear that they are coming for me. My enemies surely found out what's going on. Uh, accept my congratulations, Reverend Hale. We are glad to see that you have came back to your good work. You must pardon them. They will not budge. 
I think you must understand, sir. I cannot pardon these when twelve have already been executed. It is not just. Rebecca will not confess. The sun will rise in a few minutes. Excellency, I must have more time. Now hear me and beguile yourself no more. I will not accept a single plea for a pardon or a postponement. Then thou wilt not confess. Well, hey, the list, the seven listed there, has been given out to the village, and the village expects them to die at dawn. Postponement now would speak a, a floundering on my part. Now post yourself up like men and help me, as you're bound by God to do. Mr. Hale, have you spoken with them all? All but Proctor. He's in the dungeon. What's Proctor's way now? He sits like some great bird. You do not know he lived except his wife. His wife must be well on the way to travel. She is, sir. What thinks of it, Mr. Ferris? Your knowledge of the man. But his wife soft, is it? It is possible. He has not seen her this three months. I should summon her. Is he yet adamant? Is he struck at you again? He cannot, sir. He has changed the wall. Fetch Goody Proctor to me, and let you set him up. Aye, sir. Excellency, postpone we can publish through the town that you're striving for their confession. That speak mercy on your part, not faltering. Mr. Hale, as God has not empowered me like Joshua, I cannot stop the sun from rising. In doing so, I cannot postpone the perfection of their punishment. If you think God wills you to raise rebellion, Mr. Danforth, you are mistaken. You have heard rebellion spoken in Salem? Excellency, orphans go from house to house. Pedal, cattle, bellow the high road. The state of rotting crops paints everywhere, and no man knows where the harlot's pride will take his life. And you wonder yet if the rebellion's been spoken? Better yet, you should marvel at how they do not bring the problems. Have you preached in Andover this month? Thank God they have no need for me in Andover. You baffle me, sir. Then why have you returned then? Why, it is all simple. I come to do the devil's work. I come to counsel Christians that they should belie themselves. There is blood on my head! Can you not see the blood on my head? Hush, man. That's not what we're here to do. Goody Proctor, I hope you are hearty now. I am yet three months before my time. Pray, be at your ease. We're not here for your life, we. Mr. Hell, let's speak to you. Proctor, your husband is wrong to hang this morning. I have heard it. You know, do you not, that I have no connection with the court? I come with my own good Proctor. I have come to save your husband's life, for if his life is taken, I count myself as a murderer. Do you understand? What do you want to me? I have gone this very month, like our Lord, into the wilderness. I have sought the Christian way, for damnation is doubled on a minister who counsels men to lie. It is no lie. You cannot speak of lies. It is a lie. They are innocent. No more. No more. I'll hear no more of that. Let you not mistake your duty as I must claim. I came into this village like the bride's groom coming to his beloved. I came bearing gifts of high religion. The very crowns of holy law I brought. But with a direct touch of my pride confidence, it died. And where I looked with my eye of great faith, blood flowed up. Beware, goody prophet. Cleave to no faith if faith brings blood. It is mistaken law that leads to sacrifice. Life, life is God's most precious gift. No principle, however glorious, can justify the taking of it. I beg you, to prevail upon your husband to confess. Give him his life. Quail not before God's judgment, for God damns a liar, lest that he who throws away his life with pride. When you plead with him, I cannot think. I think that would be the devil's argument. Woman, before the loss of God, we are a swine. We cannot read this will. I will not speak to you, sir. I like your argument. Goody Proctor, you're not coming here for a dispute. Be no wifely tenderness within you. You'll die at dawn, your husband. Do you understand that? Are you stoned? You will. I tell you true, woman, had I no other proof of your unnatural life, your dry eyes would be sufficient, that you deliver your soul upon hell. A very day you would weep at such calamity. Has the devil dried up any tears within you? 
Take her out. This profits nothing. Let me speak to him. That's Lindsay. You will strive for him. You will plead for his confession? I promise not. Let me speak to him. Shall. Pray. Leave them. Mr. Proctor, you have been notified, have you not? Come in. There is light in the sky. Let you take counsel with your wife, and may God help you turn your back on hell! Mr. Proctor, if you desire a cup of cider, I can. Pray God to need you now. Shane? Child? Trolls. They are well. Rebecca's dead. I have not. How a marvel is it that you come to my life now? I, I know it. None have yet confessed. Many have confessed. Who are they? There are a hundred or more. Is a good kind as one? But he ballad is another. There'll be many. Rebecca? Not Rebecca. She is but one foot in heaven. Not may hurt her no more. Giles? Could not hurt it? Did nothing right in heaven. Giles is dead. Where would he hang? If he were not hanged, John. He would not plead iron age to his indictment, for he denied the charge that banged him surely, and auctioned off his land. So he stood mute and died Christian under the law. And his sons will have this bar. It is the law. He could not be condemned a wizard if he not plead to his indictment. How does he die? They press him, John. Press? Great stones lay upon his chest until he plead Aone. He gave them but two words, they say. More weight, he says, and die. More weight. I were a fearsome man, Giles Corey. What say you, if I give it that? I cannot judge you, John. What would you have me do? As you will. I would have it. I want you with me, John. That is sure. Is Giles' wife, have she confessed? She will not. I think it is honest 
I think so. Then Rebecca go like a saint. For me, it is fraud. I'm not your judge, John. I cannot. Would you ever give him such a lie? Say it, would you? You would not. If tongs of fire were sending you, you would not. It is evil. Good then. It is evil, and I do it. Pray to God, man. Pray to God. You'll be blessed in heaven for it. Let us have it. Are you ready, Mr. Cheever? Why must it be written? Why? For the good instruction of the village. It'll be posted upon the church's door. Where's the marshal? Whither? Hurry! Now then, Mr. Crawford, will you speak slowly and directly to the point for Mr. Cheever's sake? Mr. Proctor, have you seen the devil in your life? Come, man, there's light in the sky. The village waits at the scaffold, where I would deliver this news to them. Did you see the devil? I did. Praise God. And when he came to you, what were his demands? Did he bid you to do his work upon the earth? He did. And you bounded yourself to his service? Uh, I... Ah, Rebecca Nurse, come in. Come in, woman. Courage, man, courage. Let her witness your good example. Then maybe she herself will go to God. So hear it, goody nurse. Say on, Mr. Crockley. Did you find yourself to the devil's service? Why, John? I did. See, woman, well, it profits nothing to keep this conspiracy any further. Will you confess yourself with him? John, God said his mercy on you. Take her out! I say, will you confess yourself, or will you not? What is a lie? It's a lie. How may I dare myself? I cannot. I cannot. Mr. Proctor, when the devil has came to you, did you see Rebecca Nurse in his company? Come on, man, take courage. Did you see her with the devil? No. Did you see your sister, Mary Etsy, with the devil? I did not. Did you see Martha Corey with the devil? No, I did not. Did you see anyone with the devil? I did not! Mr. Proctor, you are mistaken. I'm not entirely trading your life in for a lie. You must have certainly saw someone with the devil. A score of people have already testified that they saw this woman with the devil. Then it is proved. Why must I say it? Why must? You say? Why, were you to save your soul, rejoice of any love of hell? They think to go like saints. I like not to spoil their names. Mr. Proctor, do you think they go like saints? It doesn't matter what they thought. She has been convicted of unnatural murder of children, and you for casting your spirit out upon Mary Warren. It's your soul alone. It's a problem here, sir. You'll prove it, witness, or you cannot live in a Christian country. Now, did you see Rebecca Nurse with the devil? I speak my own sins. I cannot judge another. I have no tongue for it. Excellency, it is enough to confess himself. Let him sign it. Let him sign it. His weighty name, where it will surely strike the village. I pray you, let him sign it. Sign it, then, Mr. Cheever and his will. Sign it, man. You have all seen it. It is enough. Then you will not sign it? You have all witnessed it. What more is needed? Do you sport with me? You will sign your full name, or it's no confession at all, mister.
Why? Do you mean to deny this confession when you are free? I mean to deny nothing. Then tell me, sir, why you do not Because it is my name! Because I cannot have another in this life! Because I lie and sign myself to lies! Because I am now with the dust on the feet of him that hang. How may I live without my name? I have given you my soul. Leave me my name! Is that document a lie? If it is, sir, I will not accept it. I will not deal in lies, mister. What do you say? You'll hand me your honest confession in my hands, or I cannot keep you from the ropes. Which way do you go, mister? Marshal! Proctor, you cannot. Then you will hang. Cannot. Pray to God and speak some privilege for them. Give them no tear. Show them a heart of stone and seek them with it. Let you fear nothing. There is another judgment that waits us all. Hang them high over the town. Whoever weeps for them weeps for corruption. Take them. Oh, I've not had my breakfast. <laughs> There's still yet time. Proctor! Proctor! Woman, plead with him in his pride, in his vanity. Be his helper. What profit him to plead? Shall the dust praise him? Shall the words declare his truth? Go to him. Take his shame away. He have his goodness now. God forbid I take it from him! <laughs> 